I'm glad that the committee remains vigilant with respect to the threat that North Korea uh, presents to our national security interests and the security interests of our friends and allies, whether that threat is conventional, uh, nuclear, or cyber. And that's exactly what I had in mind when I introduced uh, bipartisan legislation with uh, several of my Democratic and Republican colleagues, the North Korea Sanctions and Policy Enhancement Act of 2015, last session, and again this session when Congress failed to take steps in it. And I believe then, and I believe now, in two guiding principles. First, that effective deterrence needs leadership. Nuclear and missile tests, cyber attacks, highlight the continuing threat that North Korea poses to the U.S. and our friends and allies in the region. We need to see more action to energize a strategy, decisive U.S. leadership, and a broad international coalition to keep pressure on the regime. And second, it seems to me that the United States needs strategic focus, not strategic patience a strategic approach to security and stability on the Korean Peninsula should include effective sanctions, military countermeasures, diplomatic pressure, the full range of American instruments of power to keep the world focused on the threat that North Korea presents. That's why the 2015 North Korea Sanctions and Policy Enhancement Act uh, that I wrote expands the ability of the administration to sanction property and seize funds of the people or organizations that provide support to the regime. It expands the ability of the administration to sanction support for cyber attacks or cyber vandalism. And it enhances the ability of humanitarian organizations to provide life-saving assistance to reduce the suffering of the North Korean people. So um, I know several colleagues have joined us. We welcome others to join us as well. I shared our draft uh, before we introduced it with uh, Senator Gardner as the chairman of the subcommittee. And um, I think that the legislation you've introduced has a lot of similarities. I would look forward to hopefully working with you uh, in that regard. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, when the time comes uh, to move or mark up a piece of legislation, I certainly uh, would like uh, the consideration of some of the uh, elements that we'll be pursuing. And, Hopefully we can work with Senator Gardner to have a joint, unified, powerful message to uh, the North Koreans. Uh, if I could, that would be our goal, and I should have mentioned uh, your efforts also in regards to producing legislation to deal with this, and we no thank problem. you for that. No problem. Uh, Ambassador Kim, have you had an opportunity to look at the two pieces of legislation that are being considered? Um, thank you very much, Senator. First of all, uh, I remember very well your visit to Seoul while I was still serving as ambassador. It was, uh, it was a wonderful visit. Um, we, we are continuing to look at uh, the legislation that you mentioned. Um, I don't have any specific comments to make on the two uh, draft bills, but we obviously appreciate the attention you and Senator Gardner are giving to this very important issue. Well, let me just pursue, since we have the, your expertise here, uh, some of the, there's a lot of similarity between our legislation, but there are some differences. The major difference between the two bills is whether an administration will be required to impose sanctions in certain cases or be left with discretionary authority and a flexibility to do so. What considerations would you urge us to be mindful of when we are addressing that issue? Sir, in general, I, I think you know, it's important to have some discretion um, because I think the goal is to maximize our effect. And sometimes maximizing that effect means coordination, diplomacy with our partners. Uh, and that can be difficult to achieve if, in fact, there is absolutely no discretion in how these measures are applied. Mm -hmm. um, Legislation that I drafted uh, permits uh, some discretion, uh, and there's a reticence here, I must say, after the Iran situation on the question of what degree of flexibility uh, a administration will be given, understanding that whether it's this one or a future one, uh, there are concerns about that. So that's one of the realities. But I understand that the difficulty of the blunt instrument of something that is automatic, even when you don't want it to be automatic, because you may be having a goal. So it's finding the right balance there. Also, our, our legislation uh, actually funds the efforts that we want to do through 5 million uh, of the assets forfeiture funds to enforce sanctions 
as well as applying fines and penalties derived from sanctions enforcement for enforcing the North Korea Human Rights Act, which I think is, is important. Uh, Ambassador King, let me ask you, uh, humanitarian exceptions or hard lines for those uh, who suffer? Uh, the two versions differ substantially on the exceptions that would provide, in the case of my bill, carving out strong protections from sanctions for humanitarian organizations that provide important life-saving aid to civilian populations facing humanitarian crises. President Reagan reminded us that a hungry child knows no politics. Uh, do we want to encourage humanitarian organizations to continue to do this work? Are these organizations effective in the North Korea context? Um, one of the things that uh, is involved in terms of humanitarian exceptions, uh, we've had that traditionally in most programs that, uh, that have been adopted, uh, have been enacted into law. There is benefit in terms of being able to do that because providing humanitarian assistance, as President Reagan says, is something that we should be able to do. Uh, at the same time, when we provide humanitarian aid, we have to take into consideration the amount of money that's available overall, and we also have to take into account our ability to monitor the delivery of the aid to make sure it's reaching those that are most uh, in need. And to the extent that we're able to take those factors into consideration, uh, I think there's, there's benefit to an exception. I think it's also important, and certainly that was the case when we at one point were talking about North Korea and humanitarian assistance, that we keep the Congress fully informed of what's going on and what our intentions are and what our progress is in terms of dealing with those issues. In terms of private humanitarian groups, I think that's something we ought to encourage. There are a number of American organizations that are currently involved in providing some assistance to North Korea. This is done with private funds that they've raised on their own. Uh, they provide a nice counterpoint to what the official North Korean propaganda is saying. When Americans are providing assistance for multi-drug resistant tuberculosis or when they're providing uh, equipment for uh, the medical equipment that would not otherwise be available, I think it's helpful and important. And we've tried to be helpful to organizations that are providing that kind of aid. One, one final quick question, uh, Ambassador Kim, uh, it's a little off topic, but it is about the topic at the, in the end of the day. President Park, uh, I see she's in China, Russia. Uh, what does, what does, what is, uh, what is that all about from your perspective? And uh, how should we see that in light of the efforts that we are making, trying to make as it relates to North Korea and the security of the Korean Peninsula? Thank you, Senator. I, um, I think first it's important to remember that uh, for the Republic of Korean government leadership and its people, the U.S. ROC alliance is fundamental and it's the foundation uh, for all of their international relations. And I think we should view her efforts with China and um, Russia in that context. Um, starting with the need for Chinese cooperation on, on the challenge posed by North Korea. I think there are many reasons why South Korea wants to improve relations with China. And we're not troubled by it. I mean, I, I think it's in fact useful for China to deal with responsible democratic countries like South Korea that believes in rule of law, respects human rights, etc. Um, they have a huge trade relationship. I mean, China is South Korea's number one trading partner by a big margin, and we expect that that uh, will continue. Um, so there are, there are many reasons why South Korea would want to engage China uh, and to work with them on North Korea and other issues. Um, I think similarly with Russia, Russia is a member of the six-party process, um, and they have been somewhat constructive in may, making clear their commitment to the shared goal of the six-party process, uh, the shared goal of denuclearization. And I think President Park probably wants to make sure that the Russians remain in that uh, position and work with us as we look for a way back to some credible and authentic negotiations.